Now this next one is going to shock you. This is probably my most controversial take on a Sonic the Hedgehog game, and you're not going to believe what I have to say about this game. What's up guys, RGT85 here, and today it's time for another ranking video. You guys seem to really enjoy the past two, so we're doing a third one. But unlike the past two, where there's a general consensus, you know, what are the best Nintendo Switch games, what are the best Super Mario games, when you're talking about Sonic the Hedgehog, things get very, very different. Because there are a lot of people that actually like some of the worst games in the Sonic the Hedgehog Hedgehog universe and there are people that don't like the classics you know it's definitely a very divided fan base so I thought it would be fun to take a look at Sonic the Hedgehog games through my eyes and rank these games now like I said if you guys are enjoying these videos make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to the channel and I will continue to do more of these it'll be either a weekly or maybe a bi-weekly series where I just rank different games from different franchises different consoles who knows what I'll find on here but looking over the list of games there are some games missing the Game Gear games are not on this list for some reason that's okay you know I didn't really play too many of the Game Gear games. You also have Sonic and the Secret Rings that was on the Wii. It's not on this list. And the Black Knight aren't on this list as well. You know, it's games that are just sort of filler. I don't really feel the need to talk about them. But there are most of the heavy hitters on here. So I think this is going to be a really fun video. Now, of course, before we talk about actually ranking the games, we have to talk about what the different tiers are. We, of course, have the Cream of the Crop tier once again. Cream of the Crop! These are the best of the best of the franchise, definitely the definitive moments of the Sonic the Hedgehog universe. Then you have great games, games that are fantastic additions to the Sonic the Hedgehog universe. Maybe one thing about the game that I wasn't a huge fan of, but definitely games worth playing. Then you have the decent games, games that are sort of 50-50. Some people really like them, some people really don't like them. There are good mechanics in these games, but maybe there's a few things that pop up that are sort of a bit annoying. Then you have the bad games, games that are mostly bad, maybe there's a positive thing to here or there with these games. but just overall not pleasant experiences and then you have the didn't play slash horrible which I mean that's pretty self-explanatory either I didn't play the game or it's absolutely horrible so without any further ado let's talk about the blue blur and rank these games so starting things off we have the original Sonic the Hedgehog I mean that's cream of the crop cream of the crop the first Sonic the Hedgehog game was absolutely fantastic. Like, it really catapulted Sega into people's homes. It made Sonic the Hedgehog a household name. It made the Sega Genesis a household name. An interesting 2D platform with beautiful graphics, really fast-paced action. Of course, you had the soundtrack to the game as well. It was definitely unlike anything that was available on the marketplace, and it really catapulted Sega in the North American marketplace after things like the Master System, which didn't really take off. So Sonic the Hedgehog, the original, is definitely a cream of the crop game. Next up we have Sonic CD. I'm actually going to put that in cream of the crop as well. Cream of the crop. I think Sonic CD is a fantastic game that because it was on the Sega CD, maybe people aren't quite as fond of it, but it's just an amazing game. I absolutely love the box art of this game too. I think it's one of the most beautiful box arts of all time. It's just so very cool and captivating. They of course tried some different things like different sorts of levels that had different sort of pads that you would go on and the gameplay was a bit more refined than the first Sonic the Hedgehog game, but it was definitely just a fantastic game. The CD quality audio in the game as well really helped catapult this game. I really like the visual style of the game. It was definitely very interesting to see what essentially Japan wanted from Sonic the Hedgehog 2, as the Sonic the Hedgehog 2 we got in the States, of course, came out on the Genesis, and was a bit different than what Japan actually wanted the series to go in the direction of. And speaking of Sonic the Hedgehog 2, once again, cream of the crop, baby. Cream of the crop. Sonic the Hedgehog 2 definitely took the Sonic the Hedgehog formula and expanded upon it. It added in two players. It added in more characters such as Tails. It added in bigger levels that felt a bit more massive when you're going through them. And of course, the music and the audio in the game was once again absolutely fantastic. Some of the best songs of all time. Chemical Plant Zone for anyone. Like, Chemical Plant Zone is arguably one of my favorite songs of all time in a video game. This game came with my packed-in Sega Genesis as a pack-in with Sonic the Hedgehog 2, and I just absolutely have so many fond memories of this game. Just such a fantastic game and really almost the pinnacle of the classic Sonic the Hedgehog series in my opinion. Sonic the Hedgehog 3, this may piss some people off, but I'm going to put it in great. And let me tell you guys why. There was a bit of Sonic the Hedgehog burnout by this time. You had three previous games in the series, if you're counting Sonic CD, which a lot of people did have a Sega CD that picked up a Sega CD, of course, picked up Sonic CD. And Sonic the Hedgehog 3 was a fantastic game. Like, don't get me wrong, but it just felt very samey. Of course, the graphics were definitely a bit improved over Sonic the Hedgehog 2. The music was done by Michael Jackson as well, which was actually really cool. It's kind of why you don't see Sonic the Hedgehog 3 pick up on 
compilations anymore because it's probably tied up in Michael Jackson's estate. It's one of the worst kept secrets in gaming. But I really enjoy Sonic the Hedgehog 3, but it just felt very, very similar. Now, in that same breath, I'm gonna put Sonic and Knuckles in the cream of the crop as well. Cream of the crop! And that's simply because of the fact that you had the lock-on cartridge capability. Now, of course, originally Sonic the Hedgehog 3 and Sonic and Knuckles were supposed to be the same game. It was supposed to be just one massive game, but because of hardware limitations and cartridge size limitations, they couldn't do that. But being able to play Sonic 2 and 3 via Sonic and Knuckles and being able to play as Knuckles as a main character as well, definitely sort of shifted the way the game was working because it went from a bit of a fast-paced game with playing as Sonic to a bit of a slower-paced game with playing as Sonic and Knuckles knuckles and the fact that you could use your old cartridges and play these games and use knuckles in them which is absolutely amazing from a technical standpoint it's definitely a cream of the crop game because we hadn't seen any sort of lock-on technology quite like that and we really never saw anything like it ever since so i got to give sonic and knuckles a cream of the crop just because of the fact of the technological advancement of the series Moving right along, we have Sonic 3D Blast. I'm gonna put it in decent. Like, I had this game as a kid. I had some fun with it, but you could sort of see that maybe they were kind of running out of ideas. Now, this was, of course, done by Traveler's Tales. It was not done by Team Sonic, and it had an isometric view to it, but the controls just felt very slick. It felt like you didn't quite have that precision control that you had of Sonic in previous Sonic the Hedgehog games. I do like the graphics. I thought the music was pretty good as well. You know, it had that cool little intro cutscene as well on the Sega Genesis version of the game that was like full motion video that really the Sega Genesis shouldn't have been able to make. So it was definitely interesting in terms of technology, but just as a game, I would say it's decent. You can play it, you can have some fun with it, but for the most part, it's not nearly as good as the other Sonic the Hedgehog games that we had gotten up until this point, and it's definitely sort of a sign of things to come with the franchise, I feel. Uh, Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine, I'm not sure why this is on here. Um, it's great. Like, if you like Puyo Puyo, you'll like this game. It's essentially Puyo Puyo westernized. They put Robotnik on there to sort of make people interested in the game. It's a puzzle game, but I think it's a great puzzle game. Sonic Adventure. This is a tough one. Um, I'm going to put it in cream of the crop, though. I'm going to put it in cream of the crop. Cream of the crop! It may not have aged all that great. If you play Sonic Adventure today, it's definitely not a game where you're like, wow, this is great. But to me, it's sort of like Super Mario 64 in that it really helped catapult Sonic back into the limelight. You obviously had the power of the Dreamcast, and when you're doing that intro level and the killer whale just sort of jumps over you, like, that's just so iconic. That's one of the most iconic moments in gaming. This did introduce the humanizing of Sonic, which is why a lot of people don't like this game and of course the controls haven't aged all that well and we start to see the humanizing of Sonic as we go down this list and it gets pretty bad but you know I gotta give it I gotta give the game credit I think the game was absolutely fantastic Sonic Adventure 2 I didn't really play it as much as the first Sonic Adventure game but I'm gonna put it in great we did get the introduction of Shadow in this game as sort of a main character and you know was that a good idea we'll see later on in the video but you know it was still a solid game it took that formula from Sonic Adventure sort of expanded upon it a bit and I think it's a good game that you could play and still have some fun with Shadow the Hedgehog um Oh, bad or horrible? I'm gonna say bad. You know, uh, Shadow the Hedgehog was just like, what the hell are you doing here, Sega? You like, you, you take Shadow the Hedgehog and you make him like this sort of like badass 90s action star, but it's like the game itself was not enjoyable. And like this character, Shadow the Hedgehog, was just so weird. Like, why does he have guns? Like, we don't need guns in a Sonic the Hedgehog game. The formula started to feel very dated by this time. The controls were very, very slick. The game itself was a technical mess. I do like the graphics of the game and the gritty style. I think it sort of did work, but I think the character Shadow the Hedgehog just made it very cringe. If they would have made him more of a silent assassin, like maybe the game could have been a bit better. I wouldn't say it's absolutely horrible, but it's definitely a bad game. If it wasn't for the graphics engine in the game being pretty decent, I think this would be a horrible game. Sonic Rush, um, I'm gonna say it was decent. Like, once again, there were elements of it I liked, but it was just sort of another the Sonic the Hedgehog game. Sonic Rush Adventure, I'm going to do the same thing with that as well. A decent game, definitely a game you can enjoy, but nothing super groundbreaking, nothing to really make the game stand out. Sonic Heroes, I've actually never played, so I'm going to put it in didn't play. Should I play Sonic Heroes? Let me know in the comments. Sonic Riders was a game that I played a little bit, like, I know about it. Um, it was a racing game. It was decent. Like, you know, once again, it was sort of 
of like another churned out Sonic the Hedgehog game using Sonic the Hedgehog in a game that sort of didn't really make sense. Of course, you already had a racing game with Sonic R, which surprisingly isn't on this list. And I would put Sonic R under decent because I am a Sonic R fan. I might even put it under great. So it's probably a good thing it's not on this list. But yeah, you know, Sonic Riders was okay for what it was, but it was definitely you started to see this formula of them just slapping Sonic in games that maybe didn't quite make sense in order to make some money off of them. Sonic the Hedgehog 06, horrible. Like, this game is absolutely horrible. How do you release this? Like, it's not good. There's nothing redeeming about this game. It doesn't function right. And when a game doesn't function right, you really need to go back to the drawing board and be like, what the hell are we doing wrong here? It's arguably one of the worst games of all time. It's definitely the worst Sonic the Hedgehog game of all time. Just an absolute abysmal performance, an absolute abysmal game, and just a game that, you know, 99% of people just absolutely hate, but I'm sure there's 1% of people that actually like this game. Sonic Unleashed, I'm gonna say it's bad. Like, I think it could have been decent. I think if they would have just done, not done the werewolf or werehog Sonic stuff, like it could have been a decent game. You know, the 2D portions of the game were decent, but the werehog stuff was just weird. Like, what are you doing? Why are you implementing this into a Sonic the Hedgehog game? It doesn't work. Sonic fans don't necessarily need some great huge deviation from the mainline gameplay. As long as the mainline gameplay is solid, the game will probably be well received enough. And Sonic Unleashed just tried to do too many weird things and it definitely showed in the final product just a very strange game and honestly a pretty bad game next up we have sonic colors you know what you know what sonic colors is going in great only for the wii version of the game because of the pop punk song that they had in the game the color seems so bright Like that song was so damn good. And the game itself was actually really good. A really fun, enjoyable 2D Sonic game. You know, this is definitely a game that I think a lot of people forgot about. If you've never played Sonic Colors, I suggest you play it. It's one of my favorite 2D Sonic games. Definitely a great game in the series. Sonic Generations, I'll also, I'll say it's decent. You know, there was a lot of good things in Sonic Generations. I liked revisiting the older levels. They tried to sort of bridge the gap between 2D and modern Sonic as well. They tried a lot of good things with it. For the most part, if there was a category between great and decent, I would put it in between there. I don't think it's as good as Sonic Colors, but I do think there was a lot of things that worked with this game. But just for the most part, it kind of felt very similar. You know, it was sort of that thing that we had been seeing over and over again with Sonic the Hedgehog games. Sonic the Hedgehog 4, like, is decent like there was a lot of elements that i didn't like about the game but i thought they tried some decent things they tried to make it a big deal that it was sonic the hedgehog 4 you know obviously the sequel to sonic the hedgehog 3 which was the heyday of the sonic the hedgehog franchise on the genesis but i just felt it came up a bit short in terms of how the game was perceived um sonic all-stars team are transformed i actually really like this game i'm gonna say it's great i like all the different characters from the sega universes in this game i thought it was a really good Good game you know it looked really good it played really good it was a fun kart racer just a really solid game honestly um let's see what we have here i don't know what this other sonic the hedgehog 4 is i know they did different acts so we'll just leave that there uh sonic lost world hmm it wasn't bad. I'll say decent. You know, there were some elements of the game that I did like. They, of course, included some DLC, like the Legend of Zelda style skin, which was really weird. I thought it was a decent game for what it was, but there was definitely elements of the game that just sort of made you scratch your head. Once again, sort of one of those games that just didn't quite have an identity when it came to Sonic the Hedgehog. They couldn't quite figure out what they wanted to do with the franchise with this game. There were some good elements in it, but for the most part, I just think, you know, it felt a bit flat. Um, Sonic boom fire and ice like any sonic boom game is is not good uh, i'm not gonna say, i'll say horrible like for, first off fire and ice sounds like a condom commercial like you know cooling sensations heat sensations uh the sonic boom games just were not good i mean that's what it boils down to there was just a lot of crap in these games there was a lot of technical issues in these games you know it had this whole big promotion and then when it actually came out it just sputtered out of the gate and people were like oh wow another bad sonic the hedgehog game and i sort of feel like it hurt the Sonic the Hedgehog franchise more than a game like Sonic Unleashed and more than a 
game like Shadow the Hedgehog because people were actually anticipating this game. People thought that Sonic Boom could actually be a return to form for the series, whereas the other two games were just sort of side games in the Sonic the Hedgehog universe. So I feel like the impact of the game was definitely, you know, detrimental to it. Now this next one is going to shock you. This is probably my most controversial take on a Sonic the Hedgehog game, and you're not going to believe what I have to say about this game. Sonic Forces decent. That is right, folks. Sonic Forces is a decent game. Is it a great Sonic game? No. Is it a cream of the crop Sonic game? No. Is it a bad Sonic game? No. I don't think it is. I think the 2D portions of the game were very fun. I thought the 3D portions of the game were acceptable. I thought the graphics engine in the game was pretty good. I thought the performance was pretty solid. Yeah, the creative character stuff was kind of weird. There was definitely some very weird levels in the game. But for the most part, I really enjoyed Sonic Forces. I know there are people out there that absolutely hate this game, and I never quite understood why. I think Sonic Forces is definitely a decent Sonic the Hedgehog game. I think you can have some fun with it, whether you're a fan of the newer style or the older style. So I don't get the hate for this game. Like, it just doesn't make sense to me. Sonic Mania, you know what? Sonic Mania is cream of the crop. This cream of the crop! This game was the return to form that fans had wanted from Sonic the Hedgehog since Sonic Adventure. Like, this game was absolutely fantastic. It looked great. It played great. The levels were creative. You had older levels redone. You had new levels. You had great music. Absolutely fantastic experience. I have the collector's edition that comes with the cool Sonic statue. Like, this game reinvigorated my faith in the Sonic the Hedgehog games and the Sonic the Hedgehog universe. Sonic Mania is one of the best Sonic games of all time. An absolutely fantastic 2D platformer as well. So just a great game. Uh, Team Sonic Racing, I'll say it's decent, you know. I really enjoyed that game. There was definitely elements of it that I really liked. I do wish that they included more Sega characters in the game, but I think it's a very solid kart racer, considering this is a budget title that released at $40 as well. You can probably pick it up for $30 or less. Definitely a game worth checking out if you enjoy kart racing games. Uh, the last two things are Sonic Runners. I, I never played Sonic Runners, just didn't play, but this is my tier list for Sonic the Hedgehog. And you can see the vast majority of the games are decent. You can definitely see sort of a trend that a lot of the older games were the better games in the franchise, and I think that that is definitely indicative of the franchise. You know, as the 2000s rolled on, you started to get worse and worse games in the Sonic the Hedgehog universe, and it definitely shows in this list there are some absolutely horrible games. Of course, I never played Sonic Heroes, so like I said, let me know in the comments section down below if I should play that game, but this is my definitive list of Sonic the Hedgehog games and ranking these games. Let me know in the comment section down below what you think of this list. Do you agree with this list? What games would you shuffle around? And what other ranking videos do you want to see? Like I said, this is definitely a series that I'm going to expand upon. I enjoy making these videos and giving you guys my insights into different franchises or different consoles and things like that. So let me know in the comment section down below. And as always, guys, thank you for checking out this video. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications. Hair flip that subscribe button. I think that's what Wood says. I, I really don't understand what that means. And as always, I will catch you guys on the next video. Later.